What are we talking about today? A review of the Jean Richard Aeroscope, a comparison between two watch boxes, and a special announcement. <laughs> Hi everyone, today I'm drinking, <laughs> I'm still drinking Groundworks Black Magic Espresso, but I still have a lot left. This is a full pound instead of the typical 12 ounce bag. Before we get started on today's show, I want to get a little sentimental out of appreciation for all of you. I want to say thank you to all 200 subscribers who are helping me approach nearly 20,000 views on this, my 20th episode. The terrible twos, I guess. On the grand scheme of YouTube channels, I'm small time, but I enjoy doing what I'm doing because of you. To those of you who take the time out of your day to watch my channel and to post comments, you know one of my favorite things to do is to engage back because I love to hear the views and thoughts of everyone else in a respectable manner. When I first started thinking about making this channel, I was terrified because that meant I would have had to have faced two of my biggest fears, public speaking and getting in front of the camera. So I thought I would just use my hands to show the watch when I'm doing a watch review and doing a voiceover or narration whenever talking about a watch topic. But I thought that might be a little less personal. So I took the plunge and all of you welcomed me, accepted me and made me feel very comfortable. So I have to say thank you very much. The first episode I did on my channel was the unboxing of this, my Grand Seiko. And at the time, I would have been happy with 5 or 10 views because that would have meant I would have had 10 people who share the same interest in me and who don't mind what I have to say. But that episode started to take off and my channel modestly so. Until I met a few great people along the way who helped me get to where I am right now. And they are Archie Luxury who helped me by promoting my channel on his channel. Nige Reviews who had me on one of his shows. And Just My Opinion UK, who gave me a shout out on one of his shows on his channel. I think that was the one where he talked about other YouTubers who inspired him. And most recently, Lord of Luxury, who made a show about my channel on his channel. And for those of you who know who Lord of Luxury is, it wasn't in his typical spoofing way. So I want to say thank you to everyone. And the special announcement is... I wanted to do something extra special for my 20th episode, but it was my fault that I got the ball rolling a little late. But it's still a matter of a few weeks, and I am very optimistic that that's going to still happen. Which is fairly unprecedented among most watch channels. And besides, a few weeks will go by just like that. So please stay tuned for that. And here's to another 200 subscribers, to another 20,000 views, and to another 20 episodes and beyond. Cheers everyone. This is my Jean Richard Aeroscope and I featured this on uh, my channel a couple times but I've never given it the proper review and on the PVD Exposed I, I beat this watch up really well and it survived without any marks and I'll put up some pictures on this but because of one of the viewers, Ajax Forever, who asked me to review this watch, because he mentioned that the Jean Richards are really scarce in his country um, because of VAT taxes and, and other, um, other issues. So they're not, he, there's not a lot of accessibility to the, to the GRs, which I was actually kind of surprised. I thought they had a greater presence in countries outside of the U.S. And because of that, and because of the beating that this watch survived, I've learned to really appreciate this a lot more. I'm, I'm going to put this watch on really quickly. This is 44 millimeters by 12.6 millimeters thick. Um, JR has done a really nice job aesthetically on this watch. Let's take a look at some pictures at today's rock star. Oh, you mean you didn't want my picture. And I bought this watch about 18 months ago 
before, at Ashford before Ashford was an authorized dealer for Jean Richards. So really quickly, I did another video about mentioning that uh, Ashford is now authorized dealer. So yesterday I communicated with Ashford and I asked them, do I still get a manufacturer's warranty even though I bought this watch prior to you being now an AD? And the answer is yes, I still get a manufacturer's warranty, um, which is a two year warranty. So that means I still have about six months left of the manufacturer's warranty. And I thought that was really cool. So getting back to the watch, it is 44 millimeters and it's not a size that I would buy today. I know 18 months ago, that doesn't seem that long ago, but I also bought this because the lugs, if you can get it, see, see that, are actually short versus my GS. The GS is 42 millimeters, but if you can see the comparison, the GS lugs actually slope downwards, whereas the JR is lugs are literally short. So it doesn't wear overly large on my wrist. And I bought this because I didn't have a black watch yet and it retails for $42.50, which is um, no, that's no, that's just crazy. So I bought it for about 700 and that was more reasonable. That was more in line of what this watch is. This is, I've learned to really appreciate this watch because this is made of titanium, but not just any titanium. This is a grade five titanium, which is the best kind of, or the highest quality titanium that can be used for a watch. Most people, we might be aware that titanium is more of a gray finish, it's more of a duller finish. But with a grade five, watchmakers are able to finish it very similarly to a steel watch. You, they can do a nice brushed finishing on it or even a polished finish. And it's gonna look very similar to the steel except lighter in weight. I'm likening this grade five titanium to how Rolex is the only one that I know of that uses the 90, 4L steel versus the more common 316L steel. And I think both of these are the highest quality materials for a watch. So JR has not skimped at all on this watch. On its finishing, on even on the, on the rubber, on the strap. I'm not a big fan of rubber straps, but if you can kind of tell here, it's the strap, it's ribbed. There's a lot of detail going on on this watch, including the JR that's kind of here subtly blended into the ribbing. And then on the inside of the strap, or the, the strap, yes, it's a smooth rubber. This watch happens to be one of the most comfortable watches that I have. It, and I also really like the skeletal hands. If you can notice the skeletal hands there. Some people don't like that, but I do. And I also like that red seconds hand because that red seconds hand, uh, let me put that up again. It's not painted red. It's an actual uh, red lacquer finish. And if you notice closely, the red stops at the beginning of each uh, hour marker. And then, con and then the rest of it extends um, in a regular needle. It's like a silver needle. But I really like that pop of red on this. Um, and the loom, the loom is decent. Uh, I'll put I'll put up a picture of the loom so you can get a look at it. It's not a terrible loom, but it's not the most fantastic loom. Yet, you'll still have no trouble reading the time in a movie theater or a dimly lit room. Aesthetically, JR has really done a really nice job with the watch. One complaint that I do have is, while the rest of the watch is a DLC coating, the buckle here. That small piece, that buckle, that's a PVD coating. And of all places to put a PVD, that's the worst place you could do it because most of us, at least those of us who work on a computer, this is the first thing that's gonna get chipped and scratched and beat up because it's always banging against the keyboard or your desk. So when I found out that this was PVD instead of the DLC, um, I stopped wearing this whenever um, I'm at a computer. I just took the watch off. Or a little trick is, to use an ergonomic keyboard because the heel on that keyboard um, avoids any contact with your watch, um, your watch clasp. So 
that's just a little trick to protect your watch. And they're actually very comfortable. It's ergonomic. It's supposed to be really good for us. The movement on this JR is neither an in-house movement nor an ETA. It's a Solita. It's a Solita 200 movement. And there's an article like on that. Christopher Ward did a nice article explaining the difference between a Solita 200 and an ETA 2824, which this is a clone of. This Solita 200 is a clone of the ETA 2824. Let me just read a little bit of this. So Salita added a 26 joule on the upper side of the barrel axis, which sits just below the ratchet wheel. This joule slightly reduces the friction associated with automatic winding. This is an exact clone in every way, in the way it looks, and I'll put up I'll put up a picture here, and in its and in the actual accuracy and movement. If anything, this is slightly modified to be better. I don't have anything against Etta. I just have something against it where watchmakers charge so much more for an ETA movement because we all know that ETA is a reliable uh, workhorse of a movement. And it's funny, whenever we talk about in-house movement, movement versus ETA, most of us always say, well, it's just an ETA, it's not even an in-house movement. But when we're comparing ETA with another movement such as a Salida, we say it's not even an ETA movement, it's a Salida. Well, a Salida is also a Swiss movement. so. When people say that, it doesn't have any merit because they're clones. They're an identically same movement. And the reason Salita was able to clone the ETA 2824 is because the patents ran out, so they were able to do that. And watchmakers like JR starting to use the Salita movement because ETA is starting to provide less of their movement to sources outside of the Swatch group because Swatch owns uh, the ETA movement. I think this genre shard line is a very interesting line of watches. Uh, for, for people to consider. I know I mentioned this as one of the flippers and that's still true, but these are starting to hold a value and I'm starting to think that the reason people are flipping this is because they're starting to make a little bit more money than I initially thought. When I paid about $700 for this, I haven't seen that price on Ashford ever since I bought this watch. Right now it's hovering at around $1,100 um, and that's one of the cheapest prices anywhere else out there. So. Well, I certainly didn't buy this as an investment piece. If I did decide to flip it, I don't know if I would make money off of it, but I don't also think that I would lose money. So right now it seems to be a pretty good, pretty fair investment considering what the prices are going for on this. Now let's look at the box. Some of you might know I'm a big watch box person. Well, the box on this is what you basically get. This. Now, I don't quite get what this box is. It looks like, and this is what's inside, this kind of looks like a camera bag, a, f a camera bag with the strap that comes with it. You can attach it and carry it around over your shoulder, I guess. Clearly, I haven't even used this yet. But the Aeroscope is a pilot's watch, so I'm not sure what the connection is for this. But I do kind of like this because I don't have a watch box, so I keep all the watches in its original box, and this takes up a lot less room, so I kind of like this. Um, one other thing I didn't point out is the bezel. The bezel does not move, it's fixed. Let's take a look at the box that it comes in, both the outer box and the rest of the box that this came in. Um, it's what I would call a minimalist uh, box, which is, I'm being polite by calling it kind of cheap. The box is kind of like a, it's a more of a cardboard finish, the outer box. It's not fancy at all. Compare this with my Panerai box. The Panerai box is really nice. This is one of the nicer boxes that I have. Uh, I'm not comparing watches, so I'm just showing the boxes. Um, and this is made of pear wood, and I had no idea what pear wood is when I bought the watch, but it's a fancier, it's a, it's a really nice quality wood, and it's known to age really nicely. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this box ages. But the comparison between the two boxes are just so, so great. But you know, in the grand scheme of things, I don't mind this. I don't mind this box. This box at all. It it takes up a lot less room. I'm just not sure what the connection is between what looks like a a, a portable camera bag to the aeroscope. While the Salida 200 movement is is very decent, it has a 38 38 hour power reserve. And I've been getting 40 to 41 hours, so that's been fine. JR doesn't provide a minus plus 
seconds a day. But on the wrist, I've been getting about plus seven seconds a day. So this watch is doing its job. Uh, the Jean Richard lineup does have in-house movement, and that's for their 1681 lineup. Those are in-house movements with the exhibition, exhibition case back. When I bought this watch, as I said, it was about 700, and I do regret not getting the 1681 at the time. At the time, I think it was about three or four hundred dollars more, and I felt that I should have splurged on the extra just so I could have had that in-house movement. And plus, I like the way that the 1681 looks. To me, it's a little bit more vintagey. Um, it's 45 millimeters versus just 44, but it's a flatter watch. It's it's a lot thinner than than the Aeroscope. It's kind of like the um, radio mirror from Panerai, which is 45 millimeters versus the Luminor 44 millimeters. But it's the radio mirror is thinner than the the Luminor, and so I would have got I like that radio mirror a lot. It's just a really a testament to the DLC finish. Well, I think the JR is quite an attractive watch. It would have been ideal the ideal size for me would have been between the 40 to 42 millimeters. That would have been the sweet spot. This would I recommend this Jean Richard Aeroscope? I do if you don't mind watches that are on the larger size. Um, JR has since made 39 millimeters to join their 44 millimeter lineup. So that's something to consider. If anyone else out there has a Jean Richard, let me know your thoughts and experiences on it. And thanks for watching. I'll see you the next time.